According to our community, from even nine years, you are ready to get married. Even if you go to trainings to the Manyatas, sometimes we just we, we just speak to girls, but it's like they have lost hope. When you are given out to a man, you have to undergo FGM. Maybe on that day, during your, your marriage, or before, you have to be circumcised, then you'll be married. Welcome to the End FGM podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi. I spend time with change makers who are making an impact in Kenya and beyond. Each week, we listen to incredible stories of ordinary people just like you making a difference. They share their successes, failures, and what they are learning along the way. Thank you for being with me today. Let's get started. I am seated here by the banks of River Iwasongiro with a lady called Debra Nabiki. We went to a community engagement activity yesterday and she spoke in front of elders with whom I would associate them as half others and it's something that not everyone does. We are in a vehicle right now and it actually feels very hot. But the people here are so resilient because people are working in this sun and the soils are you know quite hot even to stand in. They are used to the sun. You're used to the sun? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can see the men, they are quite a number, dressed in colorful clothes. Blue, red, yellow, green, green orange. Yeah, and there is a motorbike parked just next to the group of men. And that's where you're going to meet them today. There we are. Here we are. <laughs> We are now driving back from the community engagement program and we've met men and my friend here was able to speak to them. How was it like for you? It was good to, to be with the community and we shared many things. I was able to, to, to talk about the effects of FGM and, and effects of child early first marriage. It's not common for a young girl to speak in front of men, but you actually went and 
I watched you as you speak about um, body parts that would never have been spoken out in front of men, especially by a girl your age. What was going through your mind when you were first told, go and speak to this man about FGM? Actually, I was afraid, but I was trying my best since I wanted them to, to get knowledge, to get awareness on the effects of FGM. I wanted to be the role model to my fellow girls. It's not very easy to speak about, you know, uh, the process itself. Uh, what happens when someone is uh, someone undergoes FGM and uh, what happens basically when um, fistula happens and being able to mention those body parts and what happens when someone gives birth and the fact that um, uh, cysts develop, you know. When you talked about Ntubu, I remember Ntubu in, in, in Samburu or Masa is, is cysts. And so when I heard you mention that, some men were cringing and were saying, okay, skip that part, please. But it's important that you're able to speak about that. What was going through your mind when they were asking you to, you know, skip such parts? Yeah, there are rules. It's actually difficult. But since I wanted them to to understand, I had to speak. When did you start engaging these men? I was started to be trained last year before I finished my Form 4. I wanted uh, my community to value the girls and get to know that they are also important in the community. It's not only men who are important in the community. Also girls are important. They they will go to school and they they be successful and they will also come to help the society. In our community, sometimes they educate boys mostly and leave the girls at home since they know they will just get married. The only thing that they value from girls are the their dowry they'll be given after when the girl is married now. The the girl now might help the, the family to move from poverty maybe to to just come out of poverty. Yeah. Is there an effect that girls your age and in your village also get by the fact that they know that even if I want to study, want to go to school, th there is a time that I am going to be given out as a way of helping my parents out of poverty or just for a few cows and then they no longer are able to concentrate on their studies. They, they, they see that there is no need even for them to be, to be educated because maybe they'll, they'll just go to school when they reach now, maybe form one, form two. And maybe the girl has been booked at home. When the man comes home, maybe to borrow the girl, the girl will be probably brought out of the school and get married. She never continue the school. So sometimes they see there is no need to go to school. They better just stay at home until when they're married. And this is usually at a tender age? Yeah. How old are these girls? What's, what's the average age when they get married? According to our community, from even nine years, you are ready to get married. They don't, they don't care about the age. When the man just come at home and you be borrowed, you'll just be given out, even if you're very young. When you say being borrowed, you mean being asked for a hand in marriage? Yeah. You have to undergo FGM before getting married. Yeah, it's a must to undergo FGM before getting married. They, they, you know, according to our community, FGM is transition from childhood to adulthood so when you are given out to a man you have to undergo FGM maybe on that day during your your marriage or before you have to be circumcised then you'll be married is there an option there's no any option if you don't want to be cut so you'll maybe just away from the community you you'll be even caned so many girls have gone through this and 
statistically samburu um still has a very high percentage of fgm uh, now standing at 86% and that's among the highest in kenya but many people have worked in these communities for very many years and there still is a problem we are still one of the highest ranking in terms of fgm why is it not ending the samburu leaders now they are they are so into the culture they they tell us why is it that it's only you who is coming to say you should end fgm and this thing has started before you don't know the reason why it has started and you are coming to to try to end it, end it so sometimes it's very difficult maybe you you might even risk your life when you go and tell them maybe you look for security then you go with them that's the only time at least they can listen they will just listen they get the information but they don't digest it they'll just ignore it afterwards are these learned leaders or just community leaders they are community leaders and some of them are even learned but they don't want to understand how does that make you feel i just feel bad but i just pray that one day they will they will come and know that i was right and maybe they follow what i am trying to tell them so today we are seated here you completed your exams last year your age mates many of them have been married off right now they have families they have children do you feel privileged yeah sure i'm privileged you know i'm also i'm not happy because we have when we finish the school we are very many and now it's in one year it's not even passed and my fellow girls they have been married and others have even got children and they are not married so i don't think even it's true that when the when our, our elders tell, tell us that that fgm is preservation of i don't know virginity i don't think it's correct or it's right because personally i've not gone through fgm but i have friends who have gone through fgm and now they have children we are, we are treated equally actually even if they are they are cut and i'm not cut we are still equal there's no i don't think there is any difference between us but sometimes they they demean us they see that you are still a young child you know nothing they don't even respect you that's a challenge especially now that your home is in wamba Wamba is still far off compared to other places like this which are close to um city centers I'd say like Acho's post and it is a little bit more rural let's say and far away from um accessibility to major towns where many people are gathered and are able to see the perspectives of uh, different communities from all over Kenya and even beyond you've been able to go to school and you've met children from other communities do you feel like it's it's helped you to be able to understand that there are other people who are living their normal lives without really undergoing these harmful cultural practices has school helped you yeah the school has helped me so much at least now i know the effects the effects of fgm i know them and i've seen some sometimes the challenges that our mothers have gone through with them and yet they give birth to us successfully but i usually believe that maybe it does not it, it has not happened to them but it has happened to other people M- my mother is a fgm survivor but at least she always encourages us that we should not go through fgm even if the community even if our community is practicing it she tells us that the that if gm doesn't have any importance to our health it's not good she just did it because she was forced by her parent and he never knew the the effects or she she never knew that this thing will come to affect her later but at she she always attend the trainings and now she she knows the effects of fgm and other harmful things about it she she always even advises us 
not to go to the refugee. Yeah. That's amazing that you also have someone who is an agonist and she's like, you know, it's not essential for you to go through this. And now you are just done with school. Um, you're starting life. What do you want to pursue? I would like to be a doctor, but I'm trying hard. Maybe, you know, my background cannot support me, but I've not lost hope. I'm still working hard. You know, maybe one day I'll be successful. So you're now working with the community and you are addressing um, these harmful cultural practices. Um, and you honestly are having an opportunity of a lifetime for uh, being able to speak to the community and being able to speak to people you would call your fathers and engage them actually on skills that you are able to go through and understand uh, on the effects of FGM, speaking from a lady's perspective. So yesterday they watched uh, a film and you were there. Yeah. And one thing I, that I noticed is that as they watched the film, some of them started cringing and uh, moving away from the video. I've been attending with women, but they never like to watch the video too. They usually say, you have undergone it, you saw it, you don't like it. Maybe just you train us, but they don't like the videos. But yesterday I was happy that the men, they also had that feeling. They saw that what they are forcing their girls to do is not good. And they also felt that pain. I was encouraged because some of them, I met some of them and they saw that they are harming their, their children for non-medical reasons. At least I was happy because two of them talked to me and they said they, they will train those, those men who were not there yesterday and they will even tell them about the effects and what they have watched, how they felt. So at least I'm happy. But it still happens a lot. Here in Samburu, for example, we know that for a boy to be circumcised and he has older sisters, then the sisters have to be cut for the boy to go through circumcision. Do you see any solutions to that? From a Samburu perspective and also as a young person who's gone to school. Many people have been trained and at least now they, they have content about the effects of FGM. Many girls for now don't, don't want to be circumcised. At least now they are changing. But those are mostly girls that have gone through school. They are the ones who finished Form 4, the, the ones who have been enlightened and have undergone these trainings. Um, and mostly their parents also have undergone these um, trainings. But we also have girls that are deep inside the Manyatas. And these girls have no idea what lies beyond the village. They've come to town probably once or twice or even never before. Is there a future? Look and see. Maybe one day, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you will not have any girls being cut in Samburu. You know now it's very hard to get maybe... A girl with 18 years and above who is not circumcised. Most of them have been circumcised when they are young, maybe from 12. So even if we go to trainings to the Manyatas, sometimes we just, we, we just speak to girls. But it's like they have lost hope. They said you, you have started the organization too late. Some of us, they have been circumcised before. They heard about the FGM trainings, maybe now, but at least they said their children will not be cut. So I wish the organization could have started maybe before those girls were circumcised, but now it's too late for them. But for their children, they will not go through the cut. You've gone through school, you're now done, hoping to go to a tertiary level probably college, university, but you still have some time to work within these communities. 
what would you like to achieve maybe in the next one month uh, in regards to trying to end FGM? I'm trying to work in the community. At least I get some girls. I hope that I'll get some girls who would like to follow my my example and join me to try to end this FGM. I had a male friend and he was working with Amrev. He came and approached me, but I told him I can't make it since I'm very shy. I can't speak in front of women, men. I've never, I've never been in front of people, maybe speaking to them, all that. But at least he encouraged me, and he told me that when I get the content about FGM, I'll not be afraid. At least he encouraged me, and I said, why should I not go and try? So the first time I went to nearby Manyata in Atwamba, it's called Selanko. I was taken there, and I was afraid to talk to them, but I could answer some questions. And I found it interesting that there is nothing I should be fearing because uh, they are just my um, my parents, my sisters, and some of them were even male, my fathers. So I said I should continue doing it so that I get used to. I should not be afraid again. And I'm happy about that that friend of mine who had introduced me to this FGM's organization. At least now, I'm happy about myself. I'm doing. I'm doing a good job. I'm seeing it. I don't know. You know, sometimes I would like to share the experience with my fellow friends, but I don't get chance. You know, now in this generation, you don't get girls maybe at home. I just talk to my neighbors because I have many friends who have not undergone FGM. I usually speak to them and I tell them about the effects, at least we, even them, they are changing now. And our friends who would like even to join me, they have told me that when I hear about the, there is maybe seminars or a gym workshop, I should even call them. They join me so that even I get more courage to speak maybe with men. Sometimes men speaking to men is very hard. Like yesterday I had a tough time. But I just decided to speak out what is in me so that maybe they feel or I don't know if they'll feel it or not. We've had instances where people have been chased away by gun wielding men uh, who were found red handed guarding ceremonies that um, were being held because girls were being cut. But you are born within this community and these people still are willing to go all the way to protect uh, girls who are undergoing the practice. Do you think it's important for the young people in their communities to really take the responsibility of telling their parents to stop practicing it? Other than waiting for people from outside coming to spread the message. I just want now maybe this big project, they come and train the people in our community because even them, they don't want this FGM activity to be to be done. Maybe I'll recommend the, the project to continue offering trainings more and more. When the parents now get to know, they'll they live and spread it. Yeah. Uh, we want to bring this to a close, but before we do that, I'd like you to share with me maybe one lesson that you've learned about FGM and the best way to end it in your community, in your work, working uh, with communities um, throughout Samburu. Just one lesson. At least I have learned now that FGM is never safe. I need less operation happening to us. And it is not important in anyway. what I can tell now my fellow people. I just urge them to to stop practicing FGM 
and despite they be the the champions of ending FGM in the community. Amazing. I know that you are in a sparsely populated area and you mostly work within beyond the hills as I can see them from far away here. I know Wamba is even farther away from here, but maybe someone would like to get in touch with you and probably want to work with you or support you or just encourage you or just have a conversation around female genital mutilation here in Samburu County. How would they be able to reach you? You can reach me on Facebook. MC Debbie Sanchez. MC Debbie Sanchez. Thank you very much for joining me at the NFG podcast. It's been an amazing time speaking with this young lady. She has been working here and despite the hot and harsh climate here and also looking forward to become a doctor, she is now working with her community trying to end female genital mutilation. Thank you very much for joining me at the NFG podcast. I have learned one thing today. I have learned that young people can do something and young people can take the responsibility. And sometimes it's actually important for young people to pass, to pass the message to other young people, having been able to see both worlds, being able to see and live in villages where FGM is practiced. They have experienced it with their friends going through the cut. And also they've gone to class and know the biological reasons why this should not be practiced. So thank you very much for taking this burden and also being brave enough to speak in front of men and even women. And now still hoping to do even much more. To the listeners, thank you very much for joining us at the End FGM podcast. Till next Monday, take care. You can get bonus materials, notes, and much more at www.kipainoi.com. K I P A I N O I dot com. Please remember, we all can do something. Go out and make a difference, for we all have a responsibility to make this world a better place. Goodbye.